Is China nanoseconds behind us when it comes to fabricating computer chips? According to a recent headline in the South China Morning Post, NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang claimed that China is nanoseconds behind the United States in chips. Now, we have to take this with a grain of salt, at least to a point. The South China Morning Post is a Hong Kong-based newspaper owned by a giant Chinese company called Alibaba. Is this merely soft propaganda masquerading as like a feel-good story for the Chinese who hope to deter U.S. intervention from regional and global ambitions? Yeah! And no. <laughs> Look, uh, this story might be surprising to an American or even a Western audience who might be unaware that China's actual technological and scientific progress has increased. Remember, China produces millions and millions of STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math majors, every year. So progress isn't a surprise. Even if these guys are in diploma mills, a couple of good ones are going to slip through. I mean, you can fake credentials from places like Hong Kong, you know, but you, you can't ignore China's heavy investment in STEM, which will likely be a kinetic effector for a long time to come. They just have more brain power to put on projects. I never thought I'd have to use a virtual private network inside of my own country, but with today's political situation, here we are. You know, PIA VPN has been a sponsor for a few years now. When I started, I used to talk about how you can use PIA VPN to electronically change your location so you can watch Netflix movies in different countries. And now I find myself needing to use a VPN just to access content in my own country. Arizona on September 25th became the latest U.S. state to restrict what you can view on the internet. PIA VPN is a tunnel between your computer and the public internet that hackers and rogue government agents can't penetrate. One subscription covers all your devices. I even have it on my phone, and I do use it. So, yeah, it's useful as an extra layer of security, but I find myself using it more and more in my own country just to access content. And considering that 24 states already have restrictions on what you can see, you're probably going to need one sooner rather than later, so why not pick PA VPN with their strict no logs policy? So click the link in the description below, click the QR code somewhere up here, or go to PAVPN.com slash Macbeth to get 83% off plus four months free. It's hard to ignore the South China Morning Post hyperbole here. Is China really that close in parity with America or even Western ship manufacturing? Back in August of 2025, the Trump administration licensed NVIDIA to export AI chips to China. According to Janet Egan, writing for Just Security, the heart of this move lies with something known as addiction theory. The idea behind this addiction theory is, is pretty darn simple. American goods, such as AI chips, are so good and addictive that we can keep China hooked on our products. Thus, we can kind of curtail certain Chinese behaviors like threatening to invade Taiwan. Now, Janet Egan uses this analogy of power generators to show why U.S. addiction-based policies are flawed and could fundamentally undermine our efforts to curtail Chinese domestic chip production. And uh, she kind of says, like, all AI chips are akin to generators rather than utility companies. A generator is necessary to produce power, but you can't control what you power with it. Generators will be swapped out for others, combining local power sources or integrated into hybrid energy systems. And Egan kind of continues this by saying, like, any utility company that maintains persistent control over electricity supply and pricing, chips are one-off input. Value-neutral hardware that runs whatever code the developers choose. Now... China may use NVIDIA's CUDA or Compute Unified Device Architecture today, but they can layer domestic software and tools on American hardware later. As ecosystems mature, they can integrate these systems in with the local infrastructure. So you can have a hybrid infrastructure of Chinese and American stuff. Beijing has a national strategy to develop indigenous chip production. Access to U.S. chips, they're not going to create a lasting independence. Rather, they're going to expedite China's AI process as it scales its industrial manufacturing capacity. Now, writing for the Financial Times, Eleanor Olcott said that NVIDIA and the Chinese government recently came into conflict about potential backdoors in the H2O chip designed to be sold in China. So why is China resisting newer sales of AI chips? Well, the answer kind of goes back to new things. First, China is dominated by the Chinese Communist Party, which is notoriously paranoid of outside influences and attempts to undermine its monopoly on power. American AI chips are an example. Undue foreign influence on Chinese technological companies. Second reason there is China's concern that there may be a backdoor, a Trojan horse in American chips 
the wear of Americans bearing gifts, I guess, uh, that could be exploited during low points of relations or during wartime. And there is a non-zero chance of us doing that. Even if it's a stretch, the Chinese Communist Party, in all of its paranoia, can't take the chance that the U.S. might potentially attack its critical infrastructure from the inside. So the, the way around this is that the Chinese Communist Party needs to have localized ship manufacturing. It is a national imperative. It, it is a warfighting imperative as well. If you can't make your own chips, you can't defend your own country. When China, when China decides to invade Taiwan, chip manufacturing could be a deciding factor on when that invasion occurs. The sooner the Chinese can indigenize chip manufacturing, the sooner they can act on their regional and global ambitions with little on their way. Back during COVID, the Chinese Communist Party had intelligence that stated American and Western COVID mRNA vaccines were superior to, or at least more effective than anything the Chinese were producing at the time. However, the Chinese Communist Party saw this as an opportunity to kickstart its own pharmaceutical industry so it could eventually compete with American and Western vaccines. A healthy Chinese pharmaceutical industry means China can flex its scientific and technological muscle through vaccine diplomacy, giving that vaccine to other countries as opposed to America doing that. It also gives China a way into their country's affairs and economies. So if China's spat with NVIDIA could be a way to encourage its own microchip industry to kind of get to work, it could be China's answer to Western domination and chip making in a way to kind of develop its own chip diplomacy. Hey, we can sell you these chips and they don't have an American Trojan horse on it. Could have a Chinese Trojan horse on it, but you know, you win some, you lose some, right? So remember, this is a war fighting imperative. China, uh, China that can manufacture its own chips at any level of sophistication is a China free to do what it wants regionally and internationally. If you don't believe me, consider this. Let's say China decides to commit troops or other resources to fight a war with Taiwan. With the ability to manufacture chips at home, international sanctions, cutting off advanced technologies might be a hollow threat. So how do we counter this growing threat from an increasingly warlike China? We need to find ways to counter China that actually makes sense. The addiction theory kind of peddled by American policymakers, it's not going to work. All right, China's a rising star, but its dominance over regional and global matters doesn't really mean it's inevitable, right? Nothing's inevitable. And the U.S. and its allies need to find ways to counter China and their own innovations. If we push investment in critical areas such as chip manufacturing, software, and more, we can provide a bulwark against Chinese ambitions. It also means that we start finding ways to build up our own defenses. Shipmaking, sturdier cybersecurity, our own chip fabs as well. You know, these are signs of deterrence that can kind of go a long way here. And it also means we're getting our head out of the sand. You can't do much when you pretend that nothing is going on. If the house is on fire, we need to start acting. And guess what? The house is on freaking fire. The reality is that China will be able to manufacture microchips at the same level as American and Western companies soon. This is no longer some piece of Chinese propaganda. Yes, they're, they're lagging a little bit now, but that isn't something we can sleep on. China is growing in its capabilities, and these are increased capabilities which are going to impact the next war. If we don't take steps now to counter China, we might as well learn Mandarin, right? And fr freaking... <laughs> I know, I know that, that sounds like I'm in the 1950s. Well, you might as well start speaking Russian, you commie. But that's what's at stake. For nearly a century, the U.S.-led world order has brought about stability, progress, prosperity. A world dominated by China's Communist Party would change that in an instant. Addicting China to American technology is no fix for curtailing China's ambitions. In fact, this could lead China into cutting its addictions sooner for more domestic varieties of these technologies. Hey, uh, you want, want a good book about War China? The Wind Machine. By me. <laughs> if you like my content, consider subscribing to Substack, right? Bet.substack.com. You can also support my channel by buying a t-shirt from Bunker Branding, like my Intel Life t-shirt. And thank you guys so much for watching. Do you have a Christmas party to go to this year and you want to be the coolest guy there? Head on over to BunkerBranding.com. Get my NORAD Christmas sweater. It features a Canadian CF-18 and an American F-22 flying jointly protecting the skies during Christmas. You will be the coolest person at the Christmas party, and I guarantee you people who want to talk about fighter jets will come over to you. So head on over to BunkerBranding.com and be that cool guy at the Christmas party.